What is up, people? Appreciate everybody checking your boy out, man. We back with another one for you guys today. We're doing a, a cool video, a little twist on rate debate. Um, I read in the comments. I've, I've seen this a couple of times. They want you, they want us to rate the lakes. So I don't have my boys in house with me today, but we're gonna reach out like phone a friend, see if I can catch these boys, get them on speakerphone, and get their two cents. But uh, we're gonna rate some overall fisheries like. Go out, just absolutely smash, catch some numbers and some size mixed in. We're going to rate overrated lakes, places that we've been that are just, you know, get overhyped. They're not that great. Um, places where we feel like we can catch the biggest largemouth and places we feel like we can catch the biggest smallmouth bass in the United States of America. So I'm just going to go ahead and kick it off. I'm going to kick it off by myself with places I feel like you can just pull up, launch your boat, and you might be a novice angler, might be new to bass fishing, but you want to get into it. You're trying to learn what a bite feels like. Places where you can just go freaking smash, right? And they're not all going to be big, but man, you're going to reel them in. And uh, that's important to bass fishing, man. A lot of people underappreciate places that don't have big ones. But I actually appreciate them, and that's because new techniques come out. I need to test them out. I want to try it. I got a new jig head that I'm working on. Um, what's this shaky head hookup like? What's the, these treble hooks on this crankbait? How, what's the hookup ratio like? Like, you need to be able to get a lot of bites sometimes to test out baits. And so these fisheries are top tier, in my opinion, for a lot for a lot more than just tournament bass fishing. So let's jump into it. The lake I'm going to start with is literally in my backyard, right here. Lake Martin, here in Alabama. Not Logan Martin, Lake Martin. One of the largest lakes in the state of Alabama. It's literally 30 minutes up the road from me. I fish it all the time. And it's a place where I struggle to catch fish over three pounds. But good gosh, from a pound and a quarter to two and a half pounds, almost as many as you want to reel in. Spotted bass. And the colder it gets, the better the fishing is. I've had 100 fish days out there. I mean, it is phenomenal, man. Um, how you want to catch them? Well, how do you feel like catching them that day? You want to catch them cranking? Go cranking. You want to catch them drop shot and drop shot. On top water, throw top water. I mean, however you want to catch them, Lake Martin is so fertile and so full of spotted bass, predominantly. It has largemouth too, um, but it's predominantly small, a spotted bass fishery. And you can just catch them until you blue in the face, man. I take my kids up there. We have a good time. The wife, everybody. It's a place where you take the family and everybody's going to catch them and have a great time. So Lake Martin is at the tip top of that list for me. It's right here located in Alexander City, Alabama, and it's a phenomenal fishery. And there has been a lot of big tournaments here over the years too. So, you know, it does have good fish in it. Let's not, let's not be mistaken. It's just the average catch is going to be probably less than two pounds, but you're going to have a good time. Uh, another lake that's on the list, um, way high, okay? I'm going all the way up to New York on this one, and that's Lake Champlain. Now, Champlain is a lake where you're going to absolutely smash. You get to pick which species you want to target, largemouth, smallmouth, or in some cases, some areas of the lake, you're catching both. You're going to catch 30, 40, 50 a day, but the average bite is going to be over two pounds. So you're going to catch a lot of two and a half, three, three and a half pounders in the occasional four, four and a half. Phenomenal fishery. Now, it freezes over in the wintertime, so you can't get out there all the time. They have a bass fishing season. I think it opens June 15th, something like that, so you can't be on a lake until then. But when you can get on that lake, it has some of the best bass fishing, smallmouth, largemouth alike, in the United States of America, hands down. That's a, It's a destination place. It's worth flying to New York, booking a guide, or driving your rig up to New York, staying for a week or so, beautiful weather, in the summer months, the people are super nice and cool up there. It's just a dope place, man. Champlain, it's way up there on my list. Um, <clears throat> and then last but not least, man, I'm going to slide over to one of my personal favorite places, and that's Lake St. Clair, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan. Shout out to the D. I got a lot of college homies that I went to school with from Detroit. Shout out to Detroit. Um, Lake St. Clair, man, it's a phenomenal place, man. One of the best smallmouth fisheries in our country, no doubt. Um, it doesn't grow the big giant ones, but man, three to six pounders, just about every time you get a bite, you can count on it. It's at least a three. You're going to catch a few small ones here and there, but 
there's a lot of three to six pound smallmouth in Lake St. Clair, and it's just a phenomenal place. You could almost go there with only a drop shot. Sure, you catch them on tubes, you catch them on neds. I like to catch them deep crank in there too. But if you wanted to just simplify fishing, you grab a drop shot, you go to Lake St. Clair from June to September 15th, launch your rig, get in 16 foot of water, start panning around, or if you don't want to pan, you anti four faces sonar, y'all don't kill me. If you anti, just start pitching and flicking that drop shot around, and I can promise you in no time, it's going to be bent over with at least a three pound smallmouth. So that's another top tier place on my, on my list for just going out, launching your boat, and just straight catching them. Just straight smashing smallmouth. That place is phenomenal. Um, I'm going to drop this little nugget on you guys too. I only wanted to give you guys three lakes, but I'm going to say this side note, sidebar. Some of the best bass fishing in our country is on the Great Lakes, all the Great Lakes. Um, but it's not for smallmouth. It's for largemouth. This is the biggest sleeper and the least talked about thing, I think, in bass fishing, period. You can't win with the largemouth on any of these fisheries, whether it's St. Clair, which is not technically a great lake, but it's attached in between. It's between Erie and Huron. There's excellent largemouth fishing on Lake Huron, obviously, Saginaw Bay. Great, great, great fishing on Lake Erie, okay? All of them, all the Ontario, listen, the, the largemouth is phenomenal, but you can't win tournaments, but you guys need to tap into that. All the marinas, the shallow bays, the grassy areas, Get on them Great Lakes and go largemouth bass fishing, and you are going to experience straight mayhem. Catch them till you blue in the face, man. So I wanted to throw that in there, too. But we're going to keep this video rolling. I'm going to hop on the phone, call up a couple of the homies, see what they got to say about it. What's going on? They say. What's up, buddy? Oh, you got it, big dog. Hey, I know you're about to go, do, about to go kill some dove. I ain't going to keep you long. I just got a, I got a quick question for you. Oh, gosh, is this good or bad? What you mean? If I'm calling, it's always good, right? <laughs> Shoot away. What you got? All right, look, easy one. So if you had to pick, now I'm giving you the whole United States of America to pick from now. Okay. If you had to pick top three smallmouth destinations to go catch, not necessarily numbers, but you're going to catch biggins, big smallmouth, what you got? Okay. Dang it, that's all you got? That's easy for me. Easy. Well, now, and, and I don't know, if we, should we put them in order? Like I don't know. I ain't going to lie to you. This is a little, it's a little controversial because there is some great places. There are. Uh, golly, for big smallmouth. I'm going to say for big smallmouth, top three in in the world, not just United States, everywhere you name it. I don't even know if I got smallmouth in, across the ocean or not but i'll tell you this number number one this is gonna be a little different what everybody thinks number one the lax the lax right. minnesota straight up there is more five pound smallmouth in that place than i've ever seen in my life the lax that place i know everybody everybody's gonna be like there's no way ontario is better number two Ontario, same on River, yep. for sure. Yep. Number three, Cayuga. Yep, there it is. That's pretty. Hey, that's right. that's pretty dang strong, son. I'm sitting here <laughs> thinking about that. That's strong. Now I'll tell you this: Champlain is in the situation. Is in, in the talks. If I were to go somewhere with diversity and catching three to five pounds smallmouth, three to four and a half, Champlain without a doubt on any of them. Because that mm -hmm. place is so diverse. You can catch them in grass, catch them on rock, catch them out on bait. That place is cool, too. Yeah, no, nah, no doubt. No doubt, if man. If I had a summer home somewhere, if I could pick a summer home, ooh, I'd probably, man, it'd be hard for me not to go to Champlain and get a summer home there. I know, that place is good. And low-key, it ain't that far from the St. Lawrence River. 100%. Yeah, that, that would not now, be a bad place. If I was on like a world record journey, I, I, I'm going to surprise y'all on this. I ain't going to go to Malax. I would go to Cayuga. I really would. Yep. I would try to catch a eight. There's a, I mean, I've heard they called nine pounders in there. There was a guy called an eight and a half in there this year. Yeah, yeah, giant one. Same guy caught it last year. 
Unbelievable. What a lucky guy. Yeah, he is. I need to hang out. I need to go hang out with that dude. For real. Yeah, that's it, man. Malak's number one on my list. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. That's that's just it for me. I just got done going there, and it was absolutely phenomenal. I cannot disagree with you on your list at all, bro. That's a good damn list. That's a good list. <laughs> Well, man, hey, shoot me some dove, big dog. Uh, and I'm going to go smoke some of these birds, and then uh, you have to come over and eat some with me. You had, you had to drop. Look, you can have a melon on the side. There we go. And a, dove, and a dove popper for an appetizer. I tell you what, you throw them bad boys on the grill, I just might slide over there and do that. That's as organic as it comes. You may chew on a piece of lead, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. All, All right, bro. Right. Good luck, man. See you. Peace. There you go. All right, top three smallmouth destinations. Hey, that list DC just dropped. Strong. Would you I, add anything to that? You know, I'm I'm partial, but the thing is this: I love St. Clair, but St. Clair is not the place to go to catch giants. They got five pounders. They got six pounders. Rare occasion you might catch one over six and a quarter, six and a half. Um. But for big, big ones, I'm going to have to go with what DC said. Milak's got some freaking tanks. Cayuga got some freaking tanks. And the neighboring lake to Cayuga. Uh, I think it's called Seneca, maybe. I don't know. That, that, whatever. That, them finger lakes over there, whatever they got in the water over there, they got some freaking giants, man. And then uh, Ontario, man. I mean, y'all see the weights that the elites bring in all the time. A lot of six pounders on that pond, um, and I'm sure they got sevens and eights. And there ain't no telling what they got. He says St. Lawrence River. Here's what's, here, here's the thing. I'm gonna say this: when you hit, when you fish a tournament on St. Lawrence River and you are restricted to the river, those weights are nowhere near that. Twenty two pound bag is a really good bag. But when you can go out into the lake, you start seeing the twenty fives, the twenty sixes, twenty sevens, twenty eights. And in this case, this year, shout out my boy Brian Smith from Cali, 20, 29s. You don't see that nowhere else, man. So Ontario's definitely on there. Uh, he hit it, man. That's I, I'm, I'm with DC on that. Hello. J Dub. What up, B Dog? What's going on, brother? What you up to? Man, you know me. I'm always hanging out with Sam. Now you get a little time away. You hey. know, right? I'm actually legitimately in Sam's club right now. No <laughs> hey, hey, in Sam's club, and hey, you got the uh, you got the cart, like the multi cart that got the kids connected to it. Hey, big dog, I need like two carts right now. You need now. a couple carts because I'm sure. The, or, <laughs> hey, low key, Olivia probably got her own cart. Hey, for sure, she wants dresses. She wants everything to play with. You got to keep her out of that toys aisle, man. Things get a little expensive these days. <laughs> Hey, you got it, Big Hammer. Hey, look, I ain't, I ain't going to keep you, man. You know, uh, me and Colin sitting here, we filming, man, and we just got to chatting uh, about fishing, of course. And um, Absolutely. it's like, if you could pick three destinations in our country and, and you was on a quest for the largest fish, largemouth, we're talking largemouth now, the Ooh. largest fish you could catch, where would you go to try to catch the biggest largemouth bass? That's a toughie, man. That That's is a toughie. toughie. That's a toughie. Okay, so this, is, this, is what, this is what's crazy about this, okay? So the largest largemouth bass, they typically live, like, in a very special part of the country. Yep. Like, in, in the mindset of that. Like, when I look at that, I think that way. So, like, when I look at that, it's, like, basically, if you draw a line from, like, North Florida mm -hmm. to North Florida to, like, like almost Atlanta, like mm -hmm. zone wise like that to me like the way like that weather patterns work in that zone of the country they have the longevity of they live long they live decently long but they also their growth season is long enough like your yep. biggest bass don't live in south florida right is you know so it's like that that zone of the country so like what i would say okay first off i'm gonna say like i'm not gonna say a specific location because i um, like on the first one, just I'm going to say that northern Florida area yep. harbors some of the really, really biggest, the biggest fish in the country. Okay. Okay. Not, yep. not, yep. not the state, not the, like uh, the world record class necessarily. 
obviously then you think of like that same zone of course of course like ohi would be one yeah like lake fork that zone for 10 plus pounders yeah that's like for sure now you have some like ones that like so those like i would say ohi for sure just because of what it is and what it's kicked out the last years you have to put that in there i'm gonna say all, a lot of those smaller lakes in North Florida, yep. like within the, you know that I, I'm not going to say one specific one because like literally that's just the zone where it could go down. Like yeah. it could be a little a lake the size of this Sam's Club that has yeah. that has yeah. the, the, the state record bass in it. But that's just the way the w- weather works there. And then I would say the last one, mm, ooh, that's a tough one. That's a really <laughs> tough one to me because I, I, I of course I'm like I'm partial to a couple of them. Yep. Um, Jeez, and I don't know enough out west to really say is my problem. Like, I would love to put one out west, yep. but I don't know the – I know, obviously, when you think out west, you think of Clear Lake, you think of the Delta, you think of, yeah. like, some of those Southern California lakes that we that used to throw a lot of trout in them. So it's tough. I would say, phew, that's a really tough one. Gosh. <laughs> I just, hey, just stumped my boy. I'm telling you how to think about this. I just stumped my boy J-Dub, man. I'm sorry, because there's so many places I want to travel to. I know, I that, know. That it's tough, because, again, catching a 10... Now, if you said double digits, I could have told you a list of them. Well, but, like, the biggest I, bass I, in the country... I, don't know. I just Yeah, just, like, in general, which, which for the average angler, Jacob, let's just be for real, anything over 10 pounds is going to be... Ginormous. Ginormous. World class for them, right? So I ain't seeing, like, like, pick yes. three lakes where you think a world record lives. It's like... Yeah. It's Clear like, give Lake me three be, lakes. I want, I want yeah. to go to Clear Lake. Me. You need to go. I cannot believe. I want to go to Clear Lake. So I'm going to say Clear Lake's my, my, my third because that's two, that's three different regions of this country yep. that I feel like have giant bass in them. So no matter where you're at listening to this video, yep. you can say, okay, that place, yep, that's closer to me. That place is closer to me or that place is closer to me. All three of those have giants. Now, the yep. big difference between catching a 10-pound, you know, northern strain bass or an 8-pound northern strain bass and catching one you know, Florida strain 100%. too. So like it's figuring that out. Like there's, like there's a mindset of like, I mean, I think the biggest northern strain bass I've caught is like maybe eight pounds, seven and a half pounds, eight yep. pounds. So, yep. but anyway, that's just how my mind works. That's yeah. what I would say. That's fair. I, I you know, I, you know, it's tough for me because there's so many places I want to go travel. Well, that, and there's so many places we, I say we, you included, you know, we we haven't been. We just don't Dude, know. A lot. Yeah, a lot of places. And th- and this is one thing that people have to understand out there too as well. Um. I would say on average, I would say on average, as professional bass anglers all around the country, I say how there's 200 of us, mm-hmm. I would say 75% of those anglers have not caught a 10 plus pounder. Yeah. That's just as right. professional anglers. Yeah. Well, because if you look at the country and like what you just broke down very briefly, those three regions, most people, I mean, if you're not from one of those three regions, you, you don't really have access to them. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So there you have it. Yeah. But even guys in those regions, sometimes like I think Scott, 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 Scott Martin, he told me like previously, like you know maybe five years ago, he hadn't caught one over ten living in Florida. Yeah, yeah. That's south, crazy. South, so, like, hey, so what you say about South Florida? Fish are. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they they just it's just so specific to those like you said special regions of the country, man. I know it's nuts, but anyway, I, I, I love I love I love bass fish. I love I love trying to get after the suckers. It's, I love getting bites, but I also love chasing big ones. Ain't so no doubt, dude. Those are, those are the three regions. I, I gave you guys some regions, some ideas on that one, but that, that that's my mindset. If I'm going to chase a the giant, they're going to be one of the three zones. One of them three zones. Well, man, I know you with the fam, brother. I appreciate you taking a couple minutes for your boy. Uh, oh, tell, her, tell everybody hello. Kiss you the babies for me, bro, and I'll, I'll see you here in a couple days. All right, big dog. All right, big dog. All right, like. All right, J-Dub with his list. I mean – you can't you can't disagree with nothing Jacob said. Um, I agree with everything he said. I'm gonna put a little MDJ twist on it. Being a West Coast guy, being a California guy, I think we got some lakes in California that might even right now as we speak be harboring the, the world record. So I grew up on the California Delta. I've caught a lot of bass over ten pounds. I'm not trying to brag or nothing. It's just the California Delta. Had a lot of 10-pounders, and I happened to be coming up um, when I would say the Delta was at its height. And so, you know, there was tournaments where if you didn't have a 10, you couldn't win big bass. I mean, a lot of tournaments like that. Um, So I've caught a lot of 10-plus-pound bass. With that being said, my biggest is only 11.52. So 
there you have it. They're really hard to catch those giants. But um, I would put Lake Berryessa on there, which is right up the road from where I'm from back home. Trout-fed lake, kokanee in the lake, deep lake, all three species, largemouth, smallmouth, and spots. They all get really big and healthy in that lake. It has grass. I mean, that's the recipe, man. I, I know a guy that caught a 17 out of that lake. Did you, did you hear me? A 17. I personally know the guy that caught a 17 out of that lake. I think that has since been broken um, with an 18 or a 19, something crazy. Anyways, I think that lake really has the potential. Um, man, and then there, there's just there's so many. There's a lot of smaller lakes that none of us know about, man, that have massive potential. And it's good that they're kept secret like that too. Um, just because that's how that's how that's what it needs to be to grow these sort of fish. So, so I, have, that, I have one that you got one? Neither of y'all said. <coughs> oh crap, excuse me. Bussy. What you got? Bussy. Bussy ain't old enough. Bussy's a great place to go catch you a, a 10. A, a, Bussy's a great place to go catch you a seven, a seven to an eleven. A seven eleven, right? Bussy break in What's the name of that town? Uh, Bastrop. Bastrop. Bastrop, Louisiana. Shout out y'all and shout out Bussy Bussy Break. I, hey, you only gave me two fish, Bussy, but hey, shout out to you. You got bigs. And it's a great place to go catch one from 7 to 11, I'd say. In about 10 years, there's no telling what you might catch out of there. But Bussy, in my opinion, doesn't have the... Uh, diversity to, to grow a, like a world record fish it's not deep enough um i think it takes trout or some or other species of like a tilapia or something like that um bussy to my knowledge is just your typical you know pan fish shad crawfish kind of a lake and it it'll probably kick out some 15 16s in time um but those really really big ones you know i don't know and then there's Caney. What about Caney? Caney is another great place to go catch you a big one. Just don't go when we went for heavy hitters. Because you ain't going to catch nothing, boy. Golly. But, uh, yeah, man. Caney Lake. That's another one. So, there we go. Big Bass, United States of America. There it is. I only threw one in there. Lake Berryessa. Shout out to the hometown um, that I'm aware of. But there's so many others, man. Y'all get out there and catch y'all some tens. All right, guys. So, We've done big bass, smallmouth, all these other cool things. So now we're going to talk about overrated lakes in our country. So we uh, we got a lot of those, and we fish a lot of those on tour because they get so much hype, and then we actually go there, and then it's like womp, womp, womp. And that could be us. Don't get me wrong. That could be the fishermen too. But when the field, anytime we go somewhere and the field struggles to catch them, in my opinion, that's one of those lakes where I'm like, man, I don't know. You might be a little overrated. So I'm going to call my boy Jersey Boy. And see what he thinks in his top three overrated lakes. Let's see. Hopefully he picks up. Hey boy. Jersey boy. What's going on, Marky? You got it, brother. What you up to? Yeah, right now I'm in the fields of, of my commercial boat, bro. I'm just trying to over here, <laughs> trying to get it all cleaned up. You always into something, brother. Always. Dude, it never ends, bruh. It don't end. Off there, there, ain't, there, ain't, there ain't no such thing as all season, I know, right? I know it. It don't quit, bro. Especially with you, man. My boy, hey, Adrian, y'all don't know, runs a charter business, two of them. He got a cycle boat, pro fisherman. He's just doing hey, it all. Hey, hey, what are you, what are you doing right now? Am I recording? I'm reporting. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm promoting your businesses, bro. Oh, my <laughs> Hey, hey, you, hey, you always working for them people on YouTube, bro. Got to. Hey, listen, I ain't got forty different gigs like you, man. I need to. I, all I got is this fishing game, man. So I got, I got to go hard, bro. Nah, I like it. I like it. So but look, hey, what, you, what, you, what you got? I got a quick question for you. I'm gonna let you get back to working on that village, bro. Um, give me your top three lakes in the country that that, that you are aware of that you would consider overrated. Like, I know I got my list, but I'm reaching out. I'm just curious. Because we go to so many different places, of course, being on tour, traveling. And some of them places just be a bust, man. Oh, uh, hey, hey, I, I ain't gonna lie. Hey, there, there's a, some of them that are like, honestly, dude, top 10 in the world 
Always, and yep. they grindy. And they grindy, exactly. So let me let me hear it. Pick pick three, Adrian. Give me three. Damn, bro. I Overrated. Three. Three. All right. You know what? Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off. Yeah, you guys already know I'm a northern guy. So of course I, you know, I fish a lot of northern bodies of water growing up, and I can tell you one that always kicked me in the teeth, and that was Oneida Lake. Oneida. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. That place is trash. When you talk about northern bodies of water, <laughs> and they supposed to be good. Oneida, you go there. Hey, you fish a bass. Hey, don't you dare fish a 200 boat bass open over there. You ain't gonna catch nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never been to Oneida, bro. So I don't know. You never been to Oneida? I be, I, I'm lying. I, I went there once, messing around with Jacob in DC. We were at a cup event on an off day, but we didn't. We were just messing around. Gotcha. So I don't know. So, hey, but to your well, point, we didn't catch stuff. many. I'm gonna tell you right now, you ain't gonna catch many. <laughs> hey, 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 they could be spawning, and you can't even catch the same bass twice. Too soon. Too <laughs> soon. All right, give me two more, bro. I'm going to get hey, another one. Another one. Hey, you're, you're definitely going to disagree with me on this. Uh-oh. And honestly, man, I, I've had I've had two top tens at this place, a national tournament, so you can't say it's because it, I suck when I go there. But Lake Okeechobee, man. Lake Okeechobee. You know what? I can't disagree with you on that, bro. It, it, only because it's so weather dependent. It's Listen to me. When the stars line up, it feels like you can go anywhere and go swim a jig or go flip some pencils and go catch one. But hey, when it when it is not good, yep. that's a sucks. <laughs> hey, Scott Martin, I'm sorry if you're listening to this right now, but your leg is trash. <laughs> Adrian's going hard on the big O. Hey, I love Okeechobee though. Uh, hey, I'm not gonna lie, I like it too. I'm just saying it's overrated. I get so many guys from yeah. New Jersey, from South Jersey, like man, I want to go catch a big one. I'm going to Lake Okeechobee first week of February. Well, good luck. Good you luck. get a cold front, you ain't catching crap. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey, that's facts, though, bro. I just got done talking about that uh, with Florida fishing, bro. How Florida, how we always go in, in February, you know, January, February, March, but the best fishing down there is in May and June. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. That's uh, crazy. I know. I see. I seen the results, you know, and I was like, well, damn, maybe this place don't suck, but I wasn't fishing there. So I don't believe them bass got caught there that week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say, hey, that place is grindy. He grindy. Hey, Okeechobee can be super grindy for my folks watching. I mean, it's world-class. It's world-renowned. You better go when they biting. That's all I'm saying. 100%. Yeah, that's facts. All right, you got you got one, you got one more to hit me with. So, so last one, bro. And, uh, dude, I wish it was one of these deals I was saving best for last. But really, dude, I was struggling picking three because there's a lot of really – lakes out there and i'd like to just name 20 of them but <laughs> hey you got a a a what's what's jojo shirt say this lake sucks this you lake sucks yeah oh, hey hey there's some people i need to go buy some of them t-shirts so let me just say <laughs> there's a lot of trashy lakes out there but uh <laughs> if i had to pick if i had to pick one more man you know, it's it, this one's kind of tough for me. I, I mean, honestly, I, I'm sitting here trying to think about which one I, I you know, I felt like really sucked. But you know, I'm gonna give a lake in Tennessee, man. I'm, I'm gonna get hit, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout out Douglas Lake. Douglas Lake. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna shout out Douglas Lake. <laughs> hey, Douglas Lake. Yeah, hey, that's another one. I've had one of my worst tournaments there in my life, and it's only because the fish were offshore. Mm-hmm. They were on like eight places total. So if you got a bad boat number, you weren't catching none. Mm-hmm. Done been there. Hey, I, I can't disagree. Hey, the Dougie did me bad this year. <laughs> and, and did I won? Hey, I won the round. And you won the round. That's right. You smashed. I was out there freaking gliding boat docks with old KGB, freaking reeling them in. But dude, I'm telling you right now, that place is a hole too. Yeah, he great. <laughs> Hey, if I if I were to send you a picture of where I'm at right now, talking to you, you laugh off. Oh, I can only imagine you deep down underneath. If you're in a village of of improvised. Oh, hey, oh, hey, I ain't only in the bill. Hey, I'm talking to you on my hands and knees right now. Oh my God, bro, you're improvising. Improvising. Yeah. That's why the, that's why the boats called that. That's what you're doing right oh. now. 
Hey, fact, hey, my whole life has been nothing but improvising. <laughs> hey, you did pretty damn good at it, let me tell you, bro. Hey, hey, we try. Well, look, man, I, I know I know you in there working. I ain't going to keep you, Avina. I appreciate you, big dog. <laughs> We're gonna throw these up on the tube, man, and uh, and get these folks some 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 real game on some real life situations on these lakes. Well, well facts, people out there don't be hating me now, but let me just tell you, if one of them lakes is yours, I feel bad for you. But hey, let me uh, let me get back to it. Yes, I sir. Appreciate you, Marky. All love, brother. If you anything else? Holler at me. No, no doubt. Be good. All right, later. All right, peace. Oh, that's so funny. Hey, and I, I can't disagree with Adrian. So, like, I love Okeechobee. But like he said, if the stars have not lined up and the, and the, and the air temp drops five degrees, you are, you are in for some of the toughest fishing in your life. Now, you can easily get there, and the weather's nice and freaking smash. I mean, it goes both ways. So, I, I don't disagree with him on that. But let me see if I can think of overrated. There's some, man. Hey, shout out to Sam Rayburn, bro. Sam Rayburn is low-key overrated. Great lake. It's a great lake. I've done well there. I've, I've sucked there, too. A um, lot of big fish in there. It's overrated, and I'm going to tell you why. Sam Rayburn's overrated because of the fishing pressure. If it didn't get beat to its knees every weekend, it'd be phenomenal. But it does because of where it's at. It's in, the, it's in like the heart of bass fishing. And you got people coming from everywhere to hit Sam Raper. Now, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from going there, too. It's a great lake. It is. Whew. He tell, he can be grindy, too, though. So, shout out Raper. And then that's the only one that jumps out to me right now at the moment. But there's a lot of overrated lakes, man, that just get a lot of pub. And then you go there, and you're like, man, I went there. Lake Fork. Shout out Lake Fork. Another place I've done well. Lake Fork is very tough, man. That's not a lake where you're going to pull up, launch your boat, and go fishing for the day and smash on some bass. Not happening. You better know where they're at, know what they're setting up on, spend some time there. That's Lake Fork, man. That is just that place. You have to put time in there. Otherwise, you are not reeling them in. I promise you. You can go look at any of these results from these tournaments. It's top heavy. The guys that figured it out that week, the top 20 or so guys, 25 guys, they're smashing. Everybody else scratching their head. Luck into one here, there, or a couple here and there, and they and they got a decent bag. But it's a tough place to figure out, man. I actually struggled um, at Lake Fork in practice and then just happened to run into them in the tournament, you know. But <clears throat> when we went back the second time, the place kicked my butt, man. It's not an easy place, man. So shout out Lake Fork. You're definitely on that overrated list. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Moving along, we got one more category. All right, last but not least, I'm going to give you guys what I feel like are some sleeper lakes, okay? So I'm kind of going to hit different regions of the country. I'm going to go out west. I'm going to do something central, and then I'll do something kind of on the eastern eastern side, northeast, however you want to call it. But uh, let's start in my home state, the state of California. There's going to be some people mad at me. I don't care. We, we, we're giving it up. We're keeping it real. So, the first sleeper lake, and these are places that I wish the, the tour would go to, the BPT. Northern California, there's a lake called Trinity Lake. Okay, about three hours north of where I'm from. Trinity Lake is absolutely phenomenal. Largemouth, smallmouth, both. It's a highland, upland, reservoir style lake, um, and both species just grow really big. Um, and you can catch them doing all sorts of different things. And that's a place where I would love to fish in a BPT event, uh, Lord, Lord willing. But that's a sleeper place, man. Not a lot of people know about that place. Not a lot of people talk about that place. Phenomenal place. All right. So coming more central, we're going to stop right here, not too far from my house in the state of Alabama. No, oh, about an hour and 40 minutes from my house right here. There's a lake called Lake Wadawi. Wadawi Lake, it's on the uh, Tallapoosa River chain. It's the lake above Lake Martin. Phenomenal largemouth and spotted bass fishery. Um, it has two river arms in it, so you can, you know, for my shallow cats that want to get down and fish dirty water and square bill, spinner bait, skip docks, blah, 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 you got that. And then for my open water, live scope, panning guys, uh, clear water finesse fishermen, you can fish down the pond. I mean, the, 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 the diversity is endless on that lake. 
Um, I get I get up there four or five times a year. It's a great place, man, with Dowie Lake right here in Alabama. Definitely slept on. Not a lot of people know about it, except for the locals, of course, but it's a phenomenal fishery, man. Um, moving east. Got to throw some eastern eastern stuff in that category. Uh, and that's, man, I, I hate – this is kind of like beating a dead horse a little bit, but not really, man. Those three lakes we fish in North Carolina, man. Jordan Lake, Falls Lake, Sharon Harris. Three different styles of lakes. All three of them are phenomenal, man. And I wish we would go back there. I really enjoy fishing that place. It can be very tough, too. It's a very challenging fishery, especially Falls Lake. But when you figure it out and you unlock the key, man, the quality that lives in these places is second to none, man. Really big northern strain, largemouth bass. Um, and you can catch them so many different ways, man. It's just a great place. So that's there in Riley, North Carolina. And that's my top three, man. Slept on lakes for the country. We got California's Lake Trinity. We got Alabama's Lake Wadawi. And we got Riley, North Carolina, Jordan Lake, Sharon Harris, Falls Lake, man. That's my list. Like it or love it. I don't care. All right, you guys. I'm out, man. I appreciate y'all watching this video. A little twist on Rate the Bay. We kind of did Rate the Lake. I brought some of the homies in via telephone call everybody's busy these days we got kids and all kinds of stuff man so i appreciate y'all like subscribe comment you know the good stuff for me man and uh we're gonna keep the channel lit for y'all catch you on the next video